is probably you had to pick a guy out that's kind of the difference. He, he was probably the difference, um, you know, in, in the game. But that, that's what you have to have. You know, you have to have balance. You have to have guys coming off the bench and uh, being productive. And, and today, you know, very rarely do you play ten people in the first half and they all have a field goal. Um, I don't know if that's ever happened for us. So, um, you know, we're just happy we could, you know, you know, walk out of here with, with a victory. Very fortunate. And late in the game, you were able to get to the basket, you know, yeah. and, and not get fouled. You made the layups. I mean, just time and time again. Did you was, did you see something that you could beat them off the dribble? Well, I think they did a good job of, of preventing it for most of the game. I, I think late in the game, if you want to, you know, cover Ryan Smith and Rob Hummel, um, and you know, and stay with them the whole time. You know, I think, you know, Jackson and Barlow you know, did a good job of finding their way to the rim. And with that being said, in a couple of different situations, Bird found his way to the rim. Uh, a couple of those shots were a little unorthodox, but uh, he was able to finish at the basket. You know, it's important, I, I think, especially um, late in games. You know, you've got to get layups and you've got to get to the free throw line. You know, we struggled um, getting to the free throw line, but I, I thought we uh, did a good job of getting to the rim. Coach, do you feel like a Tale of two halves. First half was pretty frenetic, uh, offensive minded game. Yeah. Both teams seemed to buckle down a little more defensively. More of a Big Ten style game in the second half. Yeah, I thought um, you know both teams got a little tired in the second half. And it, was, it was it was hot in there, and uh, I thought both teams got fatigued. And uh, we had some looks at the basket, and they had some looks at the basket. It looks like it just came up short um, when there were some defensive breakdowns. But there, there was a kind of a tale of two halves, and uh, you know, like I said, we were fortunate to be able to grind it out. What was your reaction to, I mean, the free throw disparity was, was pretty large. I think it was Iowa took 29, you guys took 11. Was that just a functional way game played, or how did you react to that? I, I think part of it um, is kind of how the game was played, and, and part of it's being on the road. Uh, I think you come to expect that when you play on the road, um, you know, with the other team, the home team getting uh, to the free throw line more. And you got to understand, I think four of those free throws were Iowa foul on purpose. And, and so we, we technically we went to the free throw line seven times. But, you know, we, we don't have, um, you know, Juwan Johnson or Carl Landry like we've had before. We haven't had that post. So we put a big emphasis on driving the basketball because you can still get to the free throw line by driving the basketball and being aggressive. Matt, you, uh, an, another key I thought was the fact that, um, you know, you, you defended okay down the stretch, like you said. But uh, you never let, you know, Gaten's really, you know, he, or May, they, they didn't hit two or three or four of those threes in a row. They never could get over the hump, so to speak. Yeah, you know, obviously, you know, Gaten said that, that three when they were down six. We just let him dribble into uh, you know, that shot. You know, Eric May hit that shot in the second half. That three is only three of the game. And, um, you know, we want to stay with those two. We want to stay with Oglesby, but we knew how dangerous you know, their points were and, and breaking you down, but not letting those guys get their heads up and get going because Gaten's, you know, once he kind of gets going, he kind of feeds off that and feeds off the crowd, and it seems like it multiplies. Take yeah. one more. In the wake of the Butler game, Lou said that at the end of these games when you struggled to score, maybe some guys weren't being as aggressive as they could be, and mm -hmm. he wanted kind of the older guys to kind of lead by example right. in that sense. He had those two drives to the basket. Did you kind of see that in him? Well, I, a little I think bit of urgency to... You know, if you go back to the, if you go back to the Butler game in the last minute and a half, you know, Lou gets to the rim twice. Once he, you know, gets a shot blocked, the other time he gets fouled. So, you know, Lou's been able to get to the rim and be able to do it. I thought kind of the difference in this game, um, you know, we, we continued to make plays. Uh, I don't think we got the stops like we should have, but we continued to make plays. We were better in our transition defense in the second half. I wouldn't say we were good, but we were better. And, uh, you know, that really helped us. But, you know, Rob did a – you know, a good job for us finishing the game by making his free throws. Hey, Coach, I'm sorry, just one thing really quick. Can you please talk about uh, you know, the, the changes that went on today with the Big Ten and the Pac-12 or went on and then what your thoughts yeah. were with that? You know what, I didn't read it. Right. I, I heard about it, but I didn't read it. All right, thank you. Thanks.